Now we need to understand uh, a basic difference uh, between axis deviation of the heart and a mediastinal shift. So normally we know that the heart is at a 45 degrees axis and there can be a left axis deviation where the axis turns, the apex itself turns uh, uh, a little more toward the left or there can be a right axis deviation where the apex goes towards the midline. Now when you have an axis deviation, uh, we always think of intrinsic cardiac anomalies. So typically when you have a left axis deviation, there are certain anomalies we think of and when there is a right axis deviation with the line coming in the center, we need to think of some anomalies. Now why I am showing this is because as compared to axis deviation, mediastinal shift is a different entity in a way. What happens in mediastinal shift is that the heart still points to the left or to the right, uh, to the left and the heart gets shifted to one side. So if there is a mass say on the right side, the heart, the mediastinum will be shifted to the left, but the apex of the heart will still point to the left. And similarly, if there is a large mass on the left side, the entire mediastinum will be shifted to the right, but the apex of the heart will still point towards the left. And why it is important is because axis deviation typically is associated with cardiac anomalies, whereas mediastinal shift is a, one of the hallmarks of a thoracic abnormality or a thoracic mass and one of the whistleblowers as we will see later on. So, what happens in day to day practice is we always uh, don't make it a point to look at lungs uh, specifically. So, just like we look at four chambers, RGOT, LVOT, we do not look at lungs, though we are supposed to look at lungs. So, there are some whistleblowers which make us aware that okay, something is wrong in the thorax or in the lung. And the first whistleblower is a mediastinal shift. So here for example we can see that the entire mediastinum is shifted to the left but the apex of the heart is still pointing to the, uh, shifted to the right but the apex of the heart is still pointing to the left and that's a classical mediastinal shift and this is the first whistleblower that something is wrong in the thorax or in the lung. The second whistleblower is the appearance of the lung. So typically we said that lungs are slightly more hyperreflective as compared to the liver but if the ecogenicity is diff significantly different as compared to the liver, that's another clue that something is wrong going wrong in the lungs or in the thorax. And of course, this can be a large hyperreflective mass as we'll see later on. The third whistleblower are presence of cystic areas within the lungs. So normally we have uniform appearance of the lungs, but if you see cystic areas such as this, that's a third whistleblower that something is wrong with the lungs or in the thorax. The fourth whistleblower is the position of the diaphragm. So just to show you that normally if you look at a diaphragm and the respiratory movements, the diaphragm shows a slight convexity towards the chest and that's a normal appearance. If the diaphragm is flat or if the diaphragm becomes convex towards the abdomen, that's another whistleblower that something is wrong in the lungs or in the thorax. And lastly, look at the movements of the diaphragm. As I said, that more the leaves of the diaphragm should move synchronously. That is very important. If you see a paradoxical movement of diaphragm, as you see here, you can see that one leaflet is going up, the other going down, one coming up, the other going down. That is another whistleblower for a possible thoracic abnormality, classically, for example, in a diaphragmatic hernia. So as I said earlier, very often lung uh, abnormalities are picked up, not because we are concentrating on the lungs, but because we see one of these five whistleblowers which makes us aware that something is going wrong.